one would say we busted a nut. Can I say that? Forgot to take out the security knife. Blade. Day. 2008 Honda Pilot. Even today, let's pull her in and see what we got going on. Oh, wrong hand. One handed. Get some squeaky brakes. Squeak, squeak, squeak. Off. That key like wants to come apart. See? No, it's fine. All right, so we got a 2008 Pilot in the shop today. So the reason that this vehicle is here is because we had a stripped out drain plug. Um, a previous shop, I don't know who, Gila coiled the plug. The Gila coil came out and now there is a last resort plug in there, which is, I mean, I'm gonna show you. It basically has a little butterfly wing nut that opens up in the pan to hold it in and then you tighten it down against this like rubber plug. So task today is going to be removing the oil pan and replacing it with a new unit. And of course the exhaust runs right underneath the oil pan. So we're gonna have to remove that. We're gonna show you the induction heater and hopefully get this done with minimal issue. All right, so we're underneath the vehicle. You can see right there, if I zoom in, that's the last resort plug. So it's like a little wing nut and then around it here is just rubber. So we loosen this up, we're gonna drain the oil. That's gonna be the first thing that we do. You can see that the oil pan goes here and then it kind of steps up and goes over here and there's a couple bolts that go into the bell housing of the transaxle there and there. So we're gonna replace this oil pan today and you can see how low and close this exhaust hangs. So we're not gonna be able to get this oil pan out without dropping the exhaust, unfortunately. I say that because we're gonna show you the bolts here in just a second. They get really crusty. Just for ease of showing you what we're doing. So this is the front pipe that we have to disconnect. You can see those bolts, they get really crusty and they like to break. I don't play around with these things. So if this snaps off, which they are very, very likely to do, then you end up trying to pound the stud out of this side with an air hammer or something. And it's just no fun. It just, it sucks. So we're gonna use the induction heater on these guys. Get you zoomed out. This pipe goes all the way back and then you have a second one for the other bank of cylinders and those bolts go up in there and it's on a flex pipe assembly. So we gotta get this out. We might have to take the exhaust off back further. I'm not really sure yet. We're gonna use the induction heater on these. So let's get the oil drain from right there and then we'll show you how we get these out. Can already see the drippage starting. Hope that we're close enough. Well, I'm gonna lift the pan. I like to do this, that way you know you're not going to make a mess, well, you can minimize your mess. Get this, this one's kind of weird. Pull you out. Really, the oil pan's getting replaced so we really don't have to get this all the way out, but there. Let that drain. We'll show you up close and personal what this guy looks like in a little bit. All right, so the oil is still just barely dripping down into our pan. So we're gonna talk about a few things. First of which is, so this is a last resort plug. And then when you tighten this wing nut down, it pulls this rubber in and it'll seal a stripped out oil pan. So you can use this for a while. My only gripe with these has always been eventually this rubber is gonna get brittle, break down, you know, that's what happens over time. But it is a great temporary fix if you're in a pinch. So like we said, this oil pan has already been helicoiled once and it failed and it does look pretty bad in there. It's hard to get the camera in and get a good angle. So maybe once we have the oil pan out, we can show you on the bench. But we got this guy out of there. I also took this little cross member piece off. That just kind of goes down, sits right about here on the exhaust. And if you look, you can see the bolt there and the bolt right there. 
and then there's two on this side as well. I like to put them back in the holes just so you're not kicking them over as you're working. So this is our new oil pan sitting here ready to go. I hate aluminum oil pans for a few different reasons. One of which is that these things are brittle. You know, if you hit some road debris, something like that, this is gonna crack a lot easier than a stamped aluminum pan is going to bend. The stamped aluminum, like we just said, bends. So when you're dealing with taking them off, yeah, you might bend it, be able to flatten it back out on the bench, anything like that if you're reusing it. These guys, for the love of God, please go around and count your bolts when you're taking them out. So on the new part here, count your bolt holes. Make sure that you have all the bolts out before you start prying on this thing because these will crack. Particularly personal experience, Chevy Ecotec, I don't remember exactly which one, but there's two hidden bolts that are, I believe, tens or eights. I think they're tens that go up into the engine. Right about here is where they are. And if you miss one, one of them's really hidden in there, you'll crack this whole pan. So ask me how I know, just double check. Make sure you have all of your bolts out before you start prying on that thing. We're gonna use the induction heater and this guy's very annoying and makes a buzzing noise while you're using it. So I'll probably set you up, use it, and then show you. The idea behind this tool, really handy tool, um, is about 250 bucks. But the idea is that you take this coil and then you find your bolt, your fastener, something like that. And when you pull the trigger, it's gonna heat up that nut. And in about 30 seconds, that thing will be red hot. We can pull it off of there. So I'll set you up and we'll do that. And then we'll kind of show you, talk about it a little more if we have to. Um, like I said, I don't like playing around with these exhaust bolts because they break way too easily. You look at them wrong, especially in our part of the country, Minnesota, North Dakota. So we're gonna use the induction heater, see if we can get this exhaust off. So obviously every car is a little different, every job is a little bit different, but anytime in general, I'm generalizing here, there's outliers, but when you're dealing with fasteners that are stuck like this, oftentimes, well, I'll give you an example. So the dreaded 5.4 Triton spark plugs that break off in the cylinder heads on the three valve F-150s. So you would think, you know, logically, if you've never done it before, you would think, you know, I'm gonna be really nice to these, I'm gonna take them out by hand. And if you do that, you use a ratchet and you try to be nice, you know, maybe you spray a little squirrel piss in there and you think you're just gonna back them out nice, you will break them off every single time. The fix to getting those out without snapping them, and sometimes they still snap, but the fix always was go rod that thing down the interstate, get the motor nice and hot, and then pull them out with your impact gun. So we're gonna use the same kind of idea here, get this hot, and then use the little electric impact and zip off those exhaust nuts. You hold this here for a few minutes, I'm gonna shout over the buzzing of the fan in this tool. You hold this here for a few seconds, it's gonna start smoking, and shortly after that, you're gonna get a really nice, red hot penetrant heat. If you don't have one of these tools, a propane torch, a map gas torch will work. It's just a little more risky with the flame. The nice thing about this is you get a nice flameless heat. You're not worried about starting stuff on fire necessarily. All right, so of course the induction heater decides not to heat. I tried this bolt for about seven minutes and then I gave it a break. I tried again, I messed around with some different coils, didn't work. So now we're gonna use map gas um, until I can figure out that piece of crap, which will be later, we'll have to tear it down. Um, but be careful with this, obviously, full flame. Success. One down, five to go. All right, the lighting's not gonna be great here, but we're gonna show you. Look at that. Look at that guy right there, if it'll focus. So that was up through that hole, up in there. Ended up having to use a strip socket. I hate exhaust. And of course, it's gonna be hot, but we got one, two, three, four, five, six. All of them are off, so now we can get this out of here. Thank you. 
All right, so we've got our old oil pan. You can see that. This is that last resort plug. Again, it's just kind of a rubber sandwich that gets created inside the oil pan. Now, it's gonna be really hard to see how bad this is stripped out, but again, this was Gila coiled once and it just kept failing, aluminum pan. On these Hondas, the drain plug's usually a 17 and it is kind of a common problem with these. I mean, it's aluminum, so you tighten it down too much one time and all of a sudden you're going righty-loosey. So, gotta be really careful with that. Unfortunately, after it's failed a couple times, put a pan on the thing. What I like to do on these pans that are a little more involved, you, you know, it's tight in there and then you got stuff like this, bolts going this way, these are 17s. So it kind of gets wedged up in there a little bit. I'll take the new pan before I put the silicone or the gasket on and just practice routing it up in there a few times. Because if you get this all gummed up with silicone and then you get jammed up somewhere, you're gonna have a whole mess. On the engine side, I didn't take you through it. You can see there was no silicone on this really. I didn't clean this side off. But this awesome little tool that they make is called a super scraper. So this is a small one. It's got like a carbide tip on it. You don't want to drop them on the ground because they will shatter. And these guys have kind of a squared off tip. It's super, super hard. And when you're using it on aluminum, you know, you just kind of go like this and go through and clean off that surface. You want to be really careful because this will gouge and, you know, nick up the aluminum. So be careful. I also have a bigger one and now they don't come with a cool wooden handle anymore. You can see right there, it says super scraper. Love these tools, you just have to be careful with them. So cleaned up the engine side and then we rinsed it off with some brake clean, wiped it all down so it's ready to go. We're gonna test fit the new pan in there and then we'll get our silicone on there and put it in the car. Again, this step you wouldn't really have to do. I just like to do it before I put silicone on stuff so that I know possibly Okay, this one will be pretty easy. But this way, I just know which way to lift the thing so I'm not gonna smear silicone all over. I have done this without testing it first and you get jammed up and then you have to clean off all the silicone. So this just makes your life a little bit easier. You can see it is a little tight in here with our oil pickup. Sometimes you gotta shove the dipstick up out of the way, but we should be all right. All right, it's time to seal up this oil pan. I'm gonna be using the Right Stuff Black RTV, which is, this is really, really good stuff. I'm convinced you could put this on and then pull all your bolts out and it would maintain a proper seal. There's an old saying in the automotive industry, it might not be the proper stuff, but it's the right stuff. If you're unable to source the OEM grade RTV, this stuff will work just about every time. Can't stress this enough, the Right Stuff from Permatex is an awesome RTV gasket maker. I should work at a bakery icing cakes. I'm thoroughly convinced I should get a job at a bakery icing cakes. Yes, I know I use a lot. I don't want to do it twice. Sometimes you should see some of the factory stuff when I was at Toyota that we would get service campaigns for to reseal things and you take it apart or like, you know, it wasn't a service campaign, but front covers, you'd take them apart and there was hardly any silicone on anything. It's like, I wonder why I have to reseal this. Oh, because there's literally next to nothing on here. So yes, I overdo it. People have told me that a million times before. Don't care. I don't want to do the job twice. So here we are putting a metric crap ton of RTV on this oil pan. It's gonna squish out a little bit, let it dry, let it cure. It's gonna be just fine. Just make sure you do a good job, go around all your bolt holes the right way. And done. Just like that. Alright, so we got the pan in. At this point, what I like to do is go around and you can see up there we just have a bead of silicone just barely squishing out of that seam there. That's how you know you got a good seal. And again, you guys, this is YouTube, so some people are going to say, oh, you put way too much silicone on there. You know, this is how I've been doing it for years, never had a problem. And like I said, we had lots of issues at the dealership where we'd be redoing things that came from the factory with not enough silicone on them. So do I go a little crazy with silicone? Yeah, maybe. But I'm just telling you how I do things, more than one way to skin a cat. I go around and check and make sure that I got a good consistent bead everywhere. Next, we're gonna go around with this guy. This is a Mac Tools quarter inch swivel and we're just going to double check. We're gonna go around the oil pan twice and make sure everything's nice and tight. So you can see, again, look, 
This is aluminum, 10 millimeter bolts going into an aluminum pan. You don't need to go crazy tight with it. This is where this guy shines because up in this corner here where the subframe is, it gets tight. So you get a little quarter inch swivel guy like this. Makes your life a lot easier. Again, use a tiny ratchet and use your discretion because you're driving 10 millimeter bolts into aluminum thread. So you don't gotta go crazy and you're gonna have a bad day if you snap one off. So go through a few times, make sure that everything is nice and tight. Then the last thing we gotta do is put our new exhaust gaskets on here and here, bolt this thing up, fill it with oil, and we'll be good to go. Last thing we gotta do is find one of these. So we're gonna go through our nut bin for the exhaust because we stripped one of them. We had a stripped nut. One would say we busted a nut. Can I say that? Anyway, let's find that, get the exhaust back together. So, big fail on my part. I didn't have the microphone on when I was filming the outro. We did also try a new detailing product on the headlights to restore the headlights. Now, the product that we used is not going to be a permanent fix, much like when we sand them down, put a 2K clear coat on. It's not that kind of a fix, but what I've been doing is trying this on customers' vehicles for free, and normally they're really stoked about it. I would assume that this product is probably gonna last a year, a year and a half before it would need to be reapplied, but the cost would be a lot lower because the product is more of a clean it, wipe it on, much like a ceramic coating is so we'll see how this goes I have a few cars customers out with that on there right now and they're gonna report back to me and tell me how many washes it's good for if the car sits outside stuff like that so we're just kind of data collecting essentially but the oil pan is on the Honda Pilot that car is fixed and back to the customer so if you guys enjoy coming along on these repair videos drop me a like up on this video and subscribe if you have not already I really appreciate all the support you guys also as one more public service announcement many subscribers on the channel have reached out and told me that they've been unsubscribed to the channel some of them multiple times in the same week so double check to make sure you got your notifications on and that you're still actually subscribed to the channel thanks for watching you guys we'll see you next time